footnote on page 53. Mount Laurel. That's a New Jersey case. How many constitutions are there in the United States? There's 51. Each state is a sovereign government. They have a constitution. And there's a federal. There's 51 constitutions in, Florida, in the United States. There's a New Jersey case, it's a landmark case, Mount Laurel, that says every community must take their fair share of affordable housing. Beverly Hills, Palm Beach, if they were in New Jersey, can't say no, we're only for rich people. In New Jersey, I've said that now three times, there's something that says you must have a fair share. But people were fighting this throughout. But in land use parlors, people say Mount Laurel, they say, oh, that's the fair share. You gotta have fair share affordable housing. You can't say no to affordable housing. That's true in New Jersey. Not true in Florida. If the United States Supreme Court makes a decision, Roe v. Wade, that deals with abortion in all 50 states. Texas has to follow Roe v. Wade. If the New Jersey Supreme Court, following the New Jersey Constitution that talks about fair share housing opportunities for all the citizens, that's a New Jersey thing, not a Florida thing. So any time somebody's talking a legal case to you, first thing you should say, what jurisdiction? In Florida, 67 counties, believe me, there are. They all have their own circuit court. You go to circuit court, you lose. Then there's five different appellate divisions that the 67 circuit courts go into. And then the five appellate decisions, they don't like that, you go to one Supreme Court. So 67, basically, let's assume, county. Then you have five and one. Miami-Dade is in the third district, Broward's in the fourth, together with West Palm. There could be a different opinion in the third from the fourth. So what George is going to have to do, your former boss Perez, to go left or right depends upon is he in the third district or the fourth district? Because you've got no glories in each. And eventually, when there's a difference of opinion between the circuits or districts, it eventually works its way up to the Supreme Court, and then they decide it for the whole state. Okay. So don't let someone say to you, well, the law is this. If you hire a Miami lawyer, they might be very quick to give you the quote of what the law is in Miami-Dade County in that circuit court, in that court of appeals. But if your property is in Fort Lauderdale, oh yeah, that's right, it's different. So it's their job to know that, but you just need to know, unless it's coming from Congress, or the United States Supreme Court. It's not the law of the land. It's the law of a portion of the land. And that's very, very critical. So when someone says it's against the law, your first reaction is, well, what law prove it to me? I want you to look at page 55. <clears throat> The last sentence on 55, do you see the word stand-in? It's a legal term, stand-in. If the government turns your project down, you obviously have stand-in to sue, because it's your project. In this case here, these were adjacent homeowners right next door that came to the public meeting and spoke at the public meeting against the project. They have standing to sue. Going back to that map that I showed you, I think it would be page 11, of all of 
Seminole County. Big county, right? Here's the property. Someone living here who did not come to the public hearing, but is just upset because they just get upset because they hate UCF. So they went to USF. Most likely doesn't have stayed in suit to challenge the document. So you just need to realize there's a concept out there. And the goal is to give people who have rights their day in court. And just so you know, this was decided a long time ago. Congress takes my money because they tax me. They spend my money on doing things like helping people who need food and shelter, all that social stuff. Well, I think government should only build roads and bombs. As a taxpayer, I do not have the right to sue my government, Congress, as a taxpayer on how to spend money. I don't have standing. That was decided a long time ago. So you just can't say, I pay taxes, I'm going to sue. No. That's why we elect elected officials. Elections have consequences. So clearly, a lot of times, related or fortune or Trump or desert don't want to sue. Unless it's their own property. But they don't like the fact that Miami-Dade County wanted to push down affordable housing ordinance. So they go to the Latin Builders Association, a trade association, who has members. You let the Latin Builders Association, the most powerful force in Miami-Dade County, bring the lawsuit. This way does it get specifically put back against the different developers who have to still do business there. So trade associations that represent real estate people can probably sue. But that's a legal term of who has the right to go to court. And I want to make sure you're exposed to the concept. And you go to the top of page 57, those first three lines. These parties traditionally include the owner or contract purchaser, <coughs> neighbors, and government agencies. Those are the people who are part of this litigation for the Krillon PUD. We're almost done. We're not going to go to the other book. We're rounding third base. Page 57 at the bottom. The most important word, second to last line. Compromise. Do you need 50 stories? If you don't, then compromise to get the deal done. I want you to see this concept on page 59. The second paragraph on 59, up towards the top, starts with due process. <coughs> and that sentence says, it's basically fairness. If I go down about five lines, it says, due process in the land use contact involves notice, opportunity to be heard, a decision made on knowledge of standards, and opportunity to appeal. Maybe you've seen yellow signs put on property that says public notice coming, call this number. When you're going to do a rezoning, you have to mail notice to people within 300 feet of your property. Don't, if, it, if it's your project and someone is 300 feet and you only somehow went out 296 and they didn't get notice, go back to square one. Make sure you do everything right, God dies according to deeds. Because that will, because those people have right to notice. So yes, you blame your lawyer, but if you're the real estate professional in the deal, you gotta do that. Page 59, second to last paragraph. I said this before. Finally, it is the lawyer's responsibility to make sure a record is prepared. When you're going into that public hearing to get your land use entitlements, you want to make sure everything you need down the road is in there. It's kind of like this. It might rain. You better bring your umbrella with you today, and your rain jacket, and your rain goggles, and your galoshes. Don't leave them back home at your house. It doesn't do you any good there. You can't go get them. Because when it's coming down, it's coming down on you. It's kind of like how this is. If you don't get it in the record at the public hearing, you can't then get the judge to say, yeah, but judge, don't you know all these facts? 
Well, D, if they were that important, you should have brought them in at the public hearing. Okay? And then go to page 63, second paragraph. That first sentence. If, yeah, it's, it's under section 1.45, second paragraph. If, comma, for example, comma, the client is a developer, which all of you will be, the proposal under discussion, you need to know what the absolute minimum is acceptable is. What does your market study say what does your pro forma say? Be a pig if you can, but make sure you know how to compromise. Go to page 64 at the bottom. 64 at the bottom, that last paragraph. In land use matters, it is essential that the client understand the unpredictability of the review and approval process. Every lawyer will say the following. I won cases I should not have won, but I lost cases I should not have lost. How many of you, when you woke up on November 8th that morning, thought Hillary was going to win? It's unpredictable. Judges put their pants or dress on just like anyone else. They have good days, bad days. What happens if the judge's daughter just got arrested for possession? Or the wife's cheated? Or the, whatever. It's human. Now that person's in court. They're going to decide what's reasonable, what's fairly debatable, what's compatible. Do you want to take that chance? Control your own destiny. Stay out of a courtroom. And I'm a lawyer. Instead of a courtroom. And just so you see on page 65, section 1.47, the second paragraph that starts with the fee arrangement, about four and five lines down to the far right, you'll see the word flat and the loud and the word hourly. I have never seen a land use lawyer do anything on a flat fee basis because it's so unpredictable. Greenberg, Traurig, Holland and Knight, Aikman, Senefet, and all the big firms can blow through $10,000 just to get warmed up. Okay. I was doing some litigation one time, some environmental stuff. This is going back um, 15 years. I was paying $60,000 a month, beverage and diamond in New Jersey. I was paying my lawyers when I got the EMR approved, I had three different lawyers going. Every month, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. If you can't stand the heat at the kitchen, don't get in it. It's a big game. Lawyers are very crazy expensive. And when you use New York lawyers for corporate deals, over the top. So be efficient, control your lawyer. Don't be a lawyer, but this course will hopefully help you work with them. <coughs> But more important, stand up court. Get a deal done. Build something. Okay, we're going to finish up in five minutes. Page 67 at the bottom, going over to 68 at the top, gives you 11 files that a good lawyer developer would have on any deal. That's the overview of those 11 items. Then pages 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73 are a great checklist. If you ever want to figure out how well you're doing in your studies here at Nova Southeast University, you should look at this checklist and say, oh, I know what that is. I can do that. I got that. As a professional, keep good checklists. Don't do anything by memory especially with multiple deals going. But go to page 70. Page 70, Roman numeral 6, land use regulations. From A to N. You're supposed to do for me a final type project where you do a land use analysis of 
this is a pretty good checklist. So what I want to do. You said from A to N? N. See how it goes to the next page? Gotcha. Because the next Roman section 7 is public infrastructure. But most of what I'm talking about this class is land use regulations. Is that the name of the class? Land use regulations? So what I want to do next week, and I want you to remind me of this, is when we get together, we're going to start next week going through A through N. So read through it. I'll say, A, any questions? No, and I'll keep going down. And then we might get to J5, linkage. Does anybody know what linkage is? Well, not yet, but you will. So I need you to at least read these terms, okay, so that you can then figure them out. Because this is the summary of the minimum of what I think you need to know to be effective. So this is what we'll go through next week, okay? Next week, <clears throat> we'll definitely speak about the staff report. Because it's the same thing we're going to do the following week for the litigation and the settlement. So you don't need to read every word of the traffic study, but you need to know there was one in there. But read at least the first 13 pages. As far as the textbook, in theory, we should have done 1 through 5 today, but we didn't. And then next week we're supposed to do 6 through 7. The textbook, I think, is easier to read than if I had to read this. But I wanted to go through this to give you an overview, because the way I believe teaching is most effective, the more times you touch something, it becomes relearning something, then it becomes part of your DNA. We will go through the textbook. And again, my goal is not for you to remember the names of cases, but to understand concepts. So we'll pick up on this. Then, once we get past the halfway point, we can maybe not stay the full four hours. Fred, I'm going to let him go about eight minutes early, if that's okay, Fred. <laughs> okay. Drive home safe. <laughs>